Hey everyone, this is me being filmed for a PBS TV show on Da Vinci. A couple of months ago I was contacted by a film director to appear in a documentary on Da Vinci called uh, Decoding Da Vinci, and here's the trailer. Artist, inventor, enigma, Leonardo Da Vinci. Leonardo embraced mystery. Is science the key to his Mona Lisa? Is it the beating pulse underneath her skin? There was a reason for every decision in every line. He doesn't make a distinction between the arts and sciences. Decoding Da Vinci on Nova. So here is just a little discussion that I had over Skype with Doug, the director of this film, so that you get a better idea of what it's all about and how to watch it. Hello, Hello Doug, and uh, thank you for being here. Glad to be here. Yeah, Decoding Da Vinci, uh, really exciting, and um, I'm really excited to talk about it with you, because, uh, well, for once, I'm not going to be the only one talking in one of my videos, so, um, so I'll have someone else do the talking, which will uh, surely... Raise the bar. <laughs> well, I'm usually the one asking questions, so. Uh, so, Doug, like, Decoding Da Vinci, you directed this documentary, is that right? Yes. And uh, so, what is it about? What can you say about it, and uh, why should people watch it? Well, you know, this year is the 500th anniversary of Leonardo Da Vinci's death, and so um, I do a lot of films for the leading science program in America, and we wanted to do something on Leonardo da Vinci. But the first question is, what? I mean, there's so much you could do, and exactly. uh, it was rather intimidating at first. I thought, my first thought was, I'm going to need, you know, 10 hours to, to do this. And then, <clears throat> and then I thought, well, you know, even if they gave me 10 hours, it would never be enough. <clears throat> um, and so I needed to figure out how to tell this story within the regular one hour period. Um, so the hard part really became, what do you leave out? But the thing that interested me from the beginning was, um, there's been this debate of was, you know, we know, we all know Leonardo was a great artist, but there's, there's actually far more of, his, of uh, personal record related to his science. And so we wanted to look at the intersection between his science and his art. Wow. Um, so it turns out um, that it's a really way, good way to get to know Leonardo da Vinci. Um, we interviewed uh, uh, one of the uh, famous biographers of Leonardo da Vinci, Walter Isaacson, who had, whose previous book was on Steve Jobs and it's written about Albert Einstein and Benjamin Franklin. And he said the key to understanding Leonardo da Vinci is that if you really understand the Mona Lisa mm -hmm. and, and how he did it, um, what it took to do, you really understand Leonardo da Vinci. And so that became sort of a, a good storytelling device to try to uh, bring some coherence to doing a biography of this man who's so extraordinary. Yeah, that's really interesting. Uh, I I was thinking about this um, last time because um, Leonardo is probably known as one of the most, one of the greatest artists of all time. But he doesn't have that many paintings, if you think about it. But he spent his entire life like doing stuff, but like all sorts of stuff and. The way you put like science and art, and and, and try to unveil the, the the entire thing, it sounds amazing. I haven't seen it. I have only seen the trailer, but uh, sounds really cool. So you answered my my second question question basically, like what aspects of Leonardo's life are covered? Do you do you really go into the biography, or do you focus more on the work? And well, we do um, a bit of biography. Um, we, you know, it, in, in terms of the storytelling, um, there are maybe four or five times in the film where we, we sort of talk about little biographical sections. One of the, uh, but we try, to, we try to do it in a thematic way because when you tell a chronological biography, you're almost stuck doing something kind of long. 
Uh -huh. um, just there's a lot to cover, and if you want to be comprehensive or thorough, you you have to do that. <clears throat> but if you go at it more thematically, um, I think it's it it works better within the context of the kind of film we were doing. So, for instance, <clears throat> um, one of the things we do is that um, the Louvre in Paris is has just opened. Um, the a huge blockbuster show on Leonardo yeah. and we were able to work with the Louvre and behind the scenes as they were getting ready for this film I mean for the for we worked with them in our film but as they were getting ready for their exhibition and we work with the uh, the curator of Renaissance art who is a, uh, a fairly young uh, person in the art world he's He's in his 40s, and a lot of these Renaissance scholars are much older than that. Um, but he, his name is Vincent Deluva, and and one of the things Vincent said is that Leonardo was one of the first painters who really was free in his the execution of his paintings. You know, a lot of painters at the times were were more or less craftsmen, and they were turning out paintings for patrons. Mm -hmm. So they'd draw it and they'd fill it in and they'd sell it. And Leonardo was was letting the painting evolve. He was trying to discover how he wanted to create, show the life on can on a canvas. So you know, with the Mona Lisa, he worked on it for 16 years. Yeah, he was um, doing just what he wanted, right? He was doing what he was wanted, and that was really unusual. And so it raised yeah. the question: How did he become so free spirited? And And so if you start looking at his biography, particularly his youth in that way, um, you see that, you know, he was born uh, an illegitimate child. He wasn't raised with the typical structure of the Middle Ages or early Renaissance. And so he was able to come to Florence and be whoever he wanted to be. So that's, uh, how, we, that's how we deal with biography. And we deal with it a few times with, throughout the film. Yeah, that's really interesting. I I think you really have something uh, something there. All right, so you contacted me to be a part of this, and I'm sure that my viewers will will wonder why because I'm I'm not a Da Vinci expert like per se. I, I know the man, just I I read the book, and by the way, I strongly encourage you uh, to have a look if you're an artist. Um, this is a great way to get into the mind of uh, the great masses is like his writings put in a in a book a treatise on painting he didn't himself do the book it's uh, a, a recollection of his writings uh, but well you contacted me I'm, I'm just like a normal guy I'm just an artist and you contacted me for this show and I appear in it uh, so Why? <laughs> <laughs> well, it all happened through, through you know, YouTube and, and online. I, when I was doing the research for this film, I, w I was trying to understand Leonardo's painting techniques and, and what made his painting different than others of the old masters. And I was mm -hmm. looking around online and I found one of your courses um, that was about classical figure painting. and. I learned a lot from it, you, and so one of the things I do when I'm putting the film together, when I'm in the early research phase, is I talk to as many people as I possibly can, but there's certain things that happen or people you talk to that suddenly make you get it, you understand mm -hmm. something, and so then I want to try to capture that in the film. Um, and so you're, you have a, a wonderfully clear way of um, explaining these things. Um, I, I, wanted, I didn't want this all explained by you know, academics and art historians and people at museums and you know that can get a little, a little stuffy at times. Mm -hmm. um, and so I wanted to break out of that and talk to an artist. And, um, and have a practical... Uh, demonstration basically exactly so well without spoiling people too much because i don't want to go too too far in this discussion because like people will want to watch the the documentary and learn a lot about leonardo um just a question like but tough question are you ready dog 
I am, but you know, you, I'm in New York City, and you can hear the. Yeah, that's that's the sound. Here. That's the the tough question is 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 coming. So, um, uh, why is why is Leonardo da Vinci still relevant five hundred years later? Isn't it amazing? It's. Uh, I mean, it it, it was. Um, it's extraordinary to try to get inside his head and to learn about him and to find all the ways in which he is relevant. Um, I think, um, it, and it's a really difficult question to answer. Um, I told you, this I is mean, why was there was the sirens. <laughs> exactly, exactly. It should have been a drum roll, but I, 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 may, um, I may disappoint. I think... Um, one of the things I wanted to do is, you know, people, people, when I started this out off, friends and family and whatnot would sort of say, what is it about Leonardo? I mean, he's one of the most famous people. Everyone knows him. We all know he's extraordinary, but I don't really know who he, he is. Or even more, people would say, yeah, I saw the Mona Lisa. I didn't get it. <laughs> and so I wanted to do a film that would help you understand what was extraordinary about him and what is extraordinary about the, the Mona Lisa. The more you look at the Mona Lisa, the more extraordinary it is. Unfortunately, um, you know, it's, it's because it's so popular, it's in this crowded room and behind bulletproof glass and, and it's got 500 years of aging varnish on it. So it's hard to see a lot of things. Mm -hmm. but exactly. With the scope of, all the techniques we're able to, to use, I think we get inside it more um, and you at least understand uh, more about the Mona Lisa and why it's so extraordinary. I think Leonardo speaks to us in a lot of different ways. I mean, um, he's somebody who is able to, to, you know, our world is so fragmented. Science and art seem to be the opposite ends of the spectrum. In school, they're taught in completely different classes. Um, and, and different sides of the different parts of the campus on a university. Leonardo was trying to to understand life, and he wasn't making any distinction between art and science. He was trying mm. to see the world, understand the world, and then figure out how he could bring that life to a canvas, um, a two dimensional surface, not a canvas, a plank of wood. I mean, they painted on he yeah. painted on. Poplar wood. Um, so I think I think it speaks to the um, artist in everyone, to the scientist scientist in everyone. Mm -hmm. um, you know, there there ways into this man, but he was ultimately interested in in understanding and capturing the beauty of life, and that is an incredibly important and accessible thing for all of us. Wow. Doug, you talk so brilliantly about Leonardo, and uh, I think uh, I think people will really, really love the, this documentary, this film. So, when can people watch it? So, people f in the U.S. is going to be on PBS. If you're a non-U.S. Uh, citizen, it's probable that you will not be able to watch it. Is it right? Yes, it's, so this will be broadcast nationally across the United States, um, uh, you know, to a bit Canada and across the U.S., a little bit in, in northern Mexico, um, on November 13th, 9 p.m. on NOVA. NOVA is the science series on public television. But everybody in the U.S. should check their local listings because each PBS station has a little um, leeway and when they air things, so it might be at eight o'clock, it might be at 10, whatever. So check your local listings, we always say. Um, for people outside of the U.S., um, I know there's some tricky ways you can, um, you can pretend that your computer is a U.S. computer and, and try to watch it. It will be streaming um, on Nova's website for three or four months um, after broadcasts. So it's up and available. Um, uh, so hopefully people will find a way to, to watch it. It can also be exported worldwide, isn't it? Like maybe in the future, like a, a, a channel in, in France or Italy or Germany will, will buy the, the film and, and translate it. It's, yes. it's a possibility, right? 
definitely a possibility. I don't know of any yet, um, but yeah. I use, I, you know, I make the films. I'm not involved in some of those. Yeah, issues, sure, so I know. <laughs> but it could very well be. Um, that's uh, common that's practice. Right. What happens with our program. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Okay. So hopefully people will get to see. These films tend to find, you know, have a new life in various ways nowadays. Yeah, um, because they're so interesting and like they can be broadcasted almost anywhere. Right. It's, you know, this film, it, we, we were doing it for the 500th anniversary. The Louvre show is opening, has just opened. Mm -hmm. um, it is for the 500th anniversary. But in, in doing this film, I wanted to make sure we weren't, we were able to rerun this without having to re-edit it. And so I had to be careful in the language that I wasn't saying, you know, this year is the 500th mm. anniversary. Um, Clever. Uh, but I think this will be run a lot because people's interest just you know hasn't stopped in 500 years he was a he was a source of fascination during his lifetime uh, and continues to be now which is both because of his talents and because of of, um, uh, of, of what he accomplished well thank you so much Doug for uh, for everything thank you for explaining it so well and um, uh, and uh, yeah I'll I'm sure the the, the film is going to be absolutely great and uh, yeah it's great with it was you great on this you did an amazing job <laughs> thank you all right everyone that's it for this small discussion i hope you can watch the documentary and let me know what you think and i'll see you for the next video until then have fun painting have fun drawing bye